Welcome to the Flag Bearer Channel. This is Little Known Black History Facts. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. The Black Fives, the original ballers and shot callers. African Americans were making strides in basketball long before the rise of the NBA, long before such stars as Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell, Michael Jordan, and LeBron James. The pioneering efforts of all those involved helped popularize the sport in big cities and small towns alike, shaping the game that many know and enjoy today. Edwin Bancroft Henderson is known as the father of black basketball. He is also sometimes referred to as black basketball's grandfather. Henderson, the first black certified instructor of physical education in the United States, brought the white dominated sport to black America in 1907. Henderson and his contemporaries envisioned basketball and sports in general as providing a rare opportunity to combat the Jim Crow oppression of the times. Edwin Bancroft Henderson, who was born in Southwest Washington, D.C., went on to become a teacher, coach, civil rights activist, and author. He learned basketball while studying physical education at Harvard's University Dudley Sargent School of Physical Training. The school was affiliated with the International YMCA Training School in Springfield, Massachusetts, which is where James Naismith had invented the sport just a decade earlier. Upon returning to Washington, D.C., Henderson promptly introduced the game to black students in the segregated public school system there. He organized a basketball league for black players in a city where only whites had access to basketball courts or clubs. It was the first time African Americans had played basketball on a wide scale basis, earning Henderson distinction as the father of black basketball and the District of Columbia as the birthplace of black basketball. Henderson set the tone and created the infrastructure for African American participation in athletics by creating leagues and association for black athletes and referees when no such thing previously existed. He later formed the first African American Athletic Conference, the Interscholastic Athletic Association. Through the ISAA, Henderson organized and prompted intercity play between black basketball teams along the mid Atlantic coast, especially between New York and Washington, D.C. Henderson soon organized a basketball team for the local 12th Street Colored YMCA which he then led to an undefeated season in the 1909-1910 Black National title. The game soon entered various YMCAs, and in a matter of years, several all-black basketball teams sprang up throughout the country. From the introduction of the game of basketball to black communities on a wide scale in 1904 to the racial integration of the NBA in 1950, dozens of African-American teams were founded and flourished. They had to battle discrimination and marginalization, but they went on to create culturally and socially rich, meaningful events. But despite headline-making rivalries between big city clubs, the shrewd moves of innovative businessmen, and the incontestable talent of star players, this period in sports history is almost entirely unknown to basketball fans. Just after the game of basketball was invented in 1891, teams were called fives in reference to their five starting players. Basketball, like American society, was racially segregated. Teams made up entirely of African American players were often known as colored fives, Negro fives, or black fives. The period became known as the Black Fives era. Relatively few people have heard of the Black Fives. The African American basketball teams that played up until the NBA was integrated in 1950. The sport of basketball remained divided from 1904, when basketball was first introduced to African Americans on a wide scale organized basis, until the racial integration of the National Basketball League in the 1940s and ultimately the National Basketball Association in 1950. During this period known as the Black Fives era, Dozens of all-black teams emerged, flourished, and excelled. African Americans were making moves in basketball generations before the NBA was born. The Black Fives had no organizing body. 
Dozens of all-black teams emerged during the Black Five eras in New York City, Washington, D.C., Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Chicago, Atlantic City, Cleveland, and other cities where there was a substantial African-American population. At first, teams which were sponsored by churches, athletic and social clubs, colored YMCAs, businesses, and newspapers had few places to play since gymnasiums and athletic clubs were whites only. All black teams could not play at venues reserved for whites. Instead, they competed in segregated buildings, making use of the dance floor of black ballrooms, church basements, meeting halls, and armories. For observant and enterprising African-American sports promoters, these spaces became ready-made basketball venues and on off nights featured music by top black musicians and dancing afterward until well past midnight. Before and after the games, fans were allowed to dance to live music which spurred ticket sales. As a result, Black Fives era basketball games went well beyond the sport itself and became meaningful social events. That is why so many early game advertisements included the headline basketball and dance. The basketball games were essentially part of an evening of entertainment and fun that led to the Black Fives era teams having to develop a faster paced, more entertaining game that involved more athletic and daring styles of play. Flashiness was considered an essential part of the game. As time passed, the teams developed better organization and competition between them culminated in the Colored Basketball World Championship, pitting the best teams against one another. The Smart Set Athletic Club of Brooklyn, New York was founded in 1904 and is credited with assembling the first formally organized fully independent African-American basketball team which debuted in 1907. Like many Black Fives era men's basketball teams, the Smart Set Athletic Club had a sister team called the Spartan Girls Athletic Club. The Spartan Girls were one of America's first all-black women's basketball teams. Out of the many teams, the New York Renaissance, a.k.a. Harlem Wrens, stood apart as the most successful basketball team of the century, irrespective of race or ethnicity. They were the winningest team during the period, with an overall record of 2,588 wins to 539 losses over a 30-year period. Because the Wrens team was so dominant, officials invited the players to the first World Professional Basketball Tournament held in Chicago in 1939. The team faced off against the all-white Oshkosh All-Stars, who they defeated in the finals. That year, 10 of the best all-white teams vied for the top spot, with only two black teams, the New York Wrens and the Harlem Globetrotters, taking the court among the Black Fives. Lorenz ushered in the Harlem Renaissance period and smashed the color barrier in pro basketball. Independent African-American teams played within a well-organized nationwide barnstorming circuit. They commanded national attention in the Negro press and headlines in local papers while battling for the annual right to be called Colored Basketball World Champions. The Black Fives era spanned the period that included the first black migration, the emergence of the phonograph and radio, the growth of entertainment culture, the explosion of jazz, ragtime, and the blues, vice reform, lynchings, and race riots, the ballroom dancing craze, prohibition, the roaring 20s, the Harlem Renaissance, the Great Depression, two world wars, and the golden age of sports. The teams and players of the Black Fives era created something from nothing with no roadmap, no instructions, and no recipes. Despite many fears, doubts, and obstacles, and for little more than for the love of the game. All the while, they fostered hope, aspiration, pride, unity, realism, and self-esteem among African Americans. The Black Fives built community, celebrated culture, and created wealth. In the 1940s, the white National Basketball League teams were not much of a fan draw. So in order for the leagues to stay alive, they began staging double headers with the Harlem Globetrotters, which had emerged from the Black Five League in Chicago. The Black Fives era ended in the late 1940s with the gradual integration of white professional basketball leagues led by the National Basketball League. On August 3, 1949, after a three-year battle to win both players and fans, the NBL merged with the all-white and racially segregated Basketball Association of America to form the National Basketball Association, the NBA. 
In the 1949-1950 season, the NBA started its season with racial integration. The NBA would see three black pioneers from the Black Fives join their league. Chuck Cooper from the New York Rams was the first black player to be drafted by an NBA team. Nathaniel Sweetwater Clifton, also from the New York Rams, was the first African-American player to sign a contract in the NBA when he signed with the New York Knickerbockers. Earl Floyd was the first black player to compete in an NBA game. These individuals effectively broke the NBA color barrier and opened the door for future black players. However, even those who made the NBA after integration began were forced to be role players, concentrating only on rebounding and defense. Once the sport became desegregated, the Black Fives teams could no longer sustain a working business model. The men and women of Black Fives era were true basketball pioneers whose only desire was simply to play their best. Their commitment and dedication opened doors for generations of African American players. In doing so, they left a worldwide legacy that inspires not only ballers, but also all of us to this day. In January 2013, Claude Johnson founded the Black Fives Foundation, an independent nonprofit organization whose mission is to research, preserve, showcase, teach, and honor the pre-NBA history of African Americans in basketball. Until next time, if you like little known history facts as I do, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.